Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag. In fact, it's Mailbag Dregs for 2019, for this entire decade. And by dregs, I mean all the stuff left on the shelf. I'm going to open every single last item that I still have remaining. Some have been here for a hideous amount of time. So sorry to people who've uh, sent them in. I picked them randomly or just ones that, you know, the vibe. Um, that, but I'm going to open every single one of them. So this, I'll try and keep it very concise for each one. But you know me, concise. Yeah, right. Let's get into it. First one comes from none other than Christopher J. Gamel, my esteemed Amp Hour co-host for the last, yeah, we're almost 10 years. I think it's 10 years in February or something like that, March next year. So yeah, if you don't listen to the Amp Hour, you damn well should. It's still the number one radio podcast engineering show on the planet. So I have no idea what he said. He didn't clue me up. So let's have a look. Oh, these are, ah, cool. <laughs> They're little amp power um, coaster things. Excellent. Um, I, I don't know. He can, yeah, I, he mentioned these. I think it was, or are they stickers? No, they're, they're very thin. I thought they were coasters. Yeah, they're kind of a bit small for a coaster, I guess. But uh, yeah, no, they're stickers. So I think uh, Chris was giving these out at, you know, because he goes to tons of events and stuff. Um, so I, I don't know if you can actually buy them. I don't think so. I just have some. Maybe I'll give them out at the next EV Log meetup, perhaps. Um, yeah, that was supposed to happen this year and, well, this decade. And I was going to say it's a, you know, a typical uh, $2 Chinese uh, one from eBay, but it's not. It's from Malaysia, so um, I Let's open it up. Don't even need the knife for this one. It's a cat thing. What the hell? It's a, it's a pink cat thing. Thing. Uh. Oh, it light, lights up and flashes a red light. It's got a USB and a, is that a micro SD on the side? What? Oh, God, it's an MP3 player. I How chintzy is that? Oh, but it, it's not a Hello Kitty thing, but it's close. Ugh. So we'll just snap this turd open and there we go. Little Polly put the kettle on battery and uh, an SO8. I, I expected to see like a blob. Is there a blob on the other side? Let's have a look. Blob, 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 blob. No, what? What? Is that it? Are you kidding me? I, I expected blobby. Um, it's not. It's just got the buttons on the double sided 0.8 millimeter PCB and, and uh, like a so SO16 package. What the? I had no success finding any data on that whatsoever, so I got no idea. Yeah, but look at that. I mean, SO16 package, and it it does everything. It's got the <laughs> the full um, MP3 player, the file uh, system, you know, the processor to do all that, the uh, decoding, uh, MP3 decoding, and the headphone driver and everything. Wow. You know, what does that chip cost? You know? 20 cents, something like that, in volume. It's just nuts. Wow. I don't want my viewers in Deutschland, in particular, um, Morit Bush. I'm butchering that one, that's for sure. Um, in, uh, uh, uh Munchen, Munich, in Germany. I get, could be the German, I don't know. All right, let's have a look. I've got a note. You know I don't read notes first, spoils it. Oh, it's a, it's a beep, Grundig. Wow, it's not a genuine Sony. I've done a Sony Walkman uh, teardown, and uh, it's it's a Grundig. It's a Beat Boy. Hands up if you had a Beat Boy. Wow, got another one, another brand. Oh, it is, a, it is a Walkman. Jeez, doesn't weigh anything. Wow, that that weighs a ton. This weighs nothing. Mega bass. In <laughs> pink, <laughs> classic. <laughs> I don't maybe a quick two minute tear. There's nothing in it. It's not wow, that is so cheaply built. Wow. How do you even eject? No, you don't even it's got a manual. Doesn't even oh that is so cheap ass. Wow, just it just feels really chintzy, and that's a genuine Sony. Ugh. The one and only. 
So this Beat Boy weighs a whopping 240 grams without batteries. This Sony Walkman weighs 128 grams. Um, it's a bit beat up. I mean, but it just feels so chintzy, this Sony Walkman. Oh, it's like bottom of the barrel stuff. Wow. I, like, I just got so cheap. That's terrible, Muriel. What, what on earth happened there? I don't know, but uh, wow. This Grundig, you know, and it's got Dolby, um, or the auto reverse. Oh, it's God, it's got everything. Um, but AM stereo. Oh, made in Korea. Back when made in Korea was the made in China of the uh, Japanese era. You know, all the best stuff was made in Japan, and all the crap was made in Korea. But no, they made top quality stuff now. And yes, before everyone starts bitching in the comments, I am generalizing. Of course, you can get fantastic top quality stuff made in China uh, as just as well as you could get top quality stuff made in Korea back in the day. I'm like, chill out, dude. Oh, I choose your tape type. And we're in. Well, check it out. what the hell is with the purple wheels? What? They got purple texture. Does somebody like their purple texture? What on earth? is going on there oh my goodness anyway classic oh look at the uh, single-sided construction oh how how are you doing's that but that was you know that was typical of the day no wackers yeah there's a tiny little is that the uh the chrome switch down there and oh let's have a look at the bottom it's all on the bottom it's all happening there you go wave soldered surface mount is that a date code of 87 there not entirely sure. JRC, Japan Radio Corp. But doesn't that wave soldering just look messy as? Ah, oh, it's just terrible, Muriel. Wow. <laughs> it's a shocker. What on earth happened up there? <laughs> what? <laughs> flux on, flux off. And seriously, like, did they use, like, gaffer tape to hold on the shield here? <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> wow, what a shocker. But that's all that's in it. Like, that's it. It's a two-chip solution. And uh, and just the um, the tape transport mechanism. There's your drive motor down there. And uh, that's about all she wrote. But, you know, advanced flat flex technology for the day, of course. And the Sony Walkman. Well, that was two screws there. I don't see any on the other side. And then just a couple of plastic clips. I'm just going to rip the arse out of this thing. Here we go. There we go. Oh, that's a bit, that's a bit fancy pantsier compared to the Grundig, isn't it? Of course, we're going to have a going to have a Sony brand, are we? No, that's actually not Sony branded. I'm surprised, but once again, looks like a two-chip solution. Don't need anything else. Anything else was overkill. But uh, yeah, that's a bit neater, isn't it? Um, got some flat flex going over here. Oh, that's right. That's the ribbon cable going over to. I didn't know there was anything on the front. Oh, that's the Mega Base switch. Seriously, they went to all that effort to put this Mega Base switch on the front. So to do that, they had to have that flat flex. Like they had to have this um, like switch PCB here and then the flat flex go all the way over there and they could have just had the, uh, the Mega Base switch like on the side or something. There we go. It all just comes out. Look at that. So you could... Uh, you could test that as one um, entire mechanism in the factory, but yeah, one, another flat flex going over to the head there, and that's about all she wrote, but none of that uh, auto-reverse rubbish on this one. Usually you get your Sony-branded parts on there, but uh, nope, not this time. But anyway, yeah, that's a, that's a much better build. Um, you can see how they do, they do build them down to a price, though. There's one screw holding that in. They're even like minimizing the number of screws in this thing. I mean, that's three screws for this whole thing, I think. Uh, yeah, that's amazing. So uh, that's going. That's the motor drive there. Uh, saving sense on the on the connector there. Just solder it directly on. No wackers. And we've got a uh, got a trimmer there. Is that to trim out the uh, tape speed? But yeah, there ain't much in there. It's a nice low profile motor, isn't it? Check out that. That's neat, but yeah, geez, there's not much in it, really. That's why it weighs so little. You know, the, the only metal in it is the uh, uh, base of the transport mechanism. And that's about all she wrote. So that's an interesting look at uh, Sony's absolute bottom end. I don't think they would have made a lower end one than this. Maybe they made one without the Mega Base switch, uh, perhaps, but... 
So yeah, that's like uh, bottom of the barrel stuff for Sony, but uh, you know, did the job. Listen to your mixtape, listen to some MJ. Thank you very much to Dennis um, from Deutschland. Uh, let's go. Uh, doesn't have a description. It's a circuit board. Spoiler alert. But I don't know for what. That is the... That's the trick. So... That's it. By the way, if you're watching this, um, I'm shooting this in uh, 2018, um, a day before New Year's, but you will be seeing this in 20... Uh, 20. I say 2019, 2020. I'll be on walkabout somewhere when I release this video. Oh, unfortunately, thank you very much. I've been watching for eight years. Awesome. Thank you very much, Dennis. Um, and sent some Christmas decorations. Unfortunately, Christmas is over. Next year, though. <laughs> thank you very much. There you go. Sweet. So that's a neat little uh, package. I don't think it's uh, custom, uh, like, just for me. I think it's, uh, like, it's part of the product. Unfortunately, the website is not there listed. But uh, anyway, we've got this. Shows into here. That's interesting. I like that. What? Well, right, can we... Yep, right off the bat, that is a great solution. I have not seen that before. That could be very handy. Look at this. It converts... This is a winner winner chicken dinner. Converts a, uh, a micro USB into a coin cell. Wow! That, like, <laughs> that's great. That is a terrific solution. Look at that. It's obviously, is that, I think that extra board there is, is that just soldered? It's, there's no matching one on the top. So, how's that? Maybe it goes through a hole in the center and then it melts on the pad underneath, perhaps, and that's how they join those two boards there but that is fan freaking tastic i love that wow that's great it even pivots that's the current winner of the 2020 need idea award i like that <laughs> actually there's lots to like about this i think this is one of the best implementations of a lead christmas tree i've seen we've got a little uh single touch uh sensor down here to switch it off and on and the LEDs, look, are right angle uh, mounted into these holes there, so they're not directly staring at you. That's one thing I haven't seen um, on all the other ones, because the other ones, like, they just blare at you, right? The LEDs just go straight in your face. This one, it's going to bounce. Oh, they don't have, I would have had uh, plated holes in there, perhaps, to uh, reflect... Uh, some of the light, but that that's really quite nice. So, you know, it, it sort of like diffuses out. It'll go out both uh, sides, of course. So no matter which uh, configuration you have the, uh, you know, whichever way it mounts on the tree, um, you're just going to get those lights like little Christmas balls lighting up. That's great. That's, that's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. It's one of the best implementations I've seen. What's the micro down there? I don't know. Oh, there we go. They light up. Isn't that nice? Uh, and they look like the rings. They look like little balls. Oh, that's fantastic. That's a winner. Wow, and they're going to slowly fade, are they? Different colours. That is great. That looks terrific. Well done. Very, yep. Yeah, that's the best implementation of a LED Christmas tree I've seen. Thumbs up. Ta-da! The coolest thing is, though... The boards mount at right angles like that, and we're in the dark now, and it just, it's a standalone Christmas tree. That's great. That is terrific. That's gonna, that'd be make a nice uh, nightlight as well. I think Huxley might like that. Next random one from the shelf uh, to, uh, to me. Um, it looks like it's just come from Michael O'Neill um, from South Haven. What do we got? Hey Dave, greetings from Mississippi. I found this gem in the dumpster. Thank you very much, Michael. Huge Aussie, huge Aussie knife only written on it. Yes. All right. Huge Aussie knife. Look at this. Yes, this is pretty much a replica of the Crocodile Dundee knife. It's close. It's close. Good enough for Australia. Let's have a look. It's a confuser. Oh, it's, it mentions it's got ho uh, kooky horoscope buttons. It's got horoscope buttons. French Germany. Oh, it does. They're the shift buttons. Ah, oh, pure wankery. I mean, astrology's right up there with homeopathy. I mean, it's just, it doesn't go. It turns on. Let's check it out.
Got some quality wankery here from this no <laughs> name job here. It's just the model 3818. And look at this, your star signs. Give me a break. Anyway, uh, it's, it's, yeah, dot matrix, not that uh, seven segment rubbish with currency store. <laughs> so translator, you can go phrase, good morning in French. Bonjour, German, guten Morgen. <laughs> That, uh, yeah, I won't try and pronounce those. Oh, buongiorno, of course. Dutch and Japanese. I do love how there was a disconnect between the uh, LCD uh, designer and the keyboard designer because French is, like, over here. They're not in the same physical location. Uh, you'll notice the little <laughs> enunciators up there. They're just, just all over the shop. Ah. So what's no worries in different languages? French? No. <laughs> No, no, can't do it. Ah, oh, how about Bonza? Nah, this thing's hopeless. Can't even speak Strine. I love this. If you go into phrase, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, goodbye. How are you? Fine, thank you. Excuse me, you are welcome. Glad to meet you. But if you go the other way, watch this. Where is the something? Yep. Uh, where, where, but embassy. Where is the embassy? <laughs> I'm screwed. Where is the embassy consulate? Um, look at this. I lost my call the police. I have been thief. Help. <laughs> how many of the, how many of these, how many of these should I take? <laughs> What's wrong? Where is the, my nose, why, my nose won't, my nose won't stop <laughs> running. <laughs> this is great. Figured out how to get the stupid Zodiac bullshit. You hold down the horoscope while you hold down one of the buttons while you turn it on. Anyway, bloody ridiculous. I don't know, Sagittarius. What is this bullshit? No, but yeah, right. So how do I... The Archer. What? Fire. Uh, positive. What a load of bullshit. Is that all it tells you? Doesn't it give you your, like, daily horoscope or something? Zodiac sign. Leo. That's it. Oh. And there's people that still believe this bullshit. Unbelievable. But people believe, believe religion too. God. Special lucky numbers. Oh, we've got a special lucky numbers. Here we go. 19. That's it. 19. It's our special lucky number. Ruled by the... Delusion. <laughs> Ruled by the sun. What a garbage that's it just a couple of blobs and interestingly they look like sot 23s with the top two pins shorted what that's that's weird the pads like a what you use them as diodes well, they didn't over here um <laughs> they converted through hole to surface mount diodes quite common for the day actually it's black and has absolutely no label it's a monolith. Um, yeah, okay. Maybe it came out of something else and I've lost the... Because uh, occasionally I do open things. If you're going to send me stuff, put mailbag on it. So I, I, I have no idea. It's got matching... Jeez, I don't... Uh, like charcoal black bubble wrap. Wow, that's a bit unusual. Anyway, oh, look at that. That's a nice... Uh, it's not silk, but it's um, silk-like. What have I got? Oh, look at this. It's a ruler. It's a ruler. So I, I, I guess I, I'd be able to find it on the interwebs. It's got constants and conversions and stuff like that. And it's black. So that's why everything's matching. Red goes faster. But uh, yeah, check it out. Please find enclosed a PCB ruler. Sorry. And here it is, the PCB ruler, um, there were custom SMD parts, a few references, upside down LEDs. <laughs> There's a few other things I thought engineers, makers and students might like. Um, it's, yeah, cool. Thank you very much, David. Dave? David? Online alias and anim, an, 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 an me. And I'll link it in down below. There you go. Oh, it's happened NFC. We've got a near field coil here. Um, and it's like 26 Aussie a bucks. So I'll link in the Etsy uh, store down below. I rather like the uh, protractor down here. I haven't uh, seen that on uh, on any PCB ruler before. So 
that's pretty all right. And then you've got uh, like size, uh, different um, size pad. They're not pads. I'd rather have like uh, sizes like that, um, which is what I've got on my Ta-da! EV blog ruler down here. Um, and I don't know why... Oh, look, my bench is... Uh, my bench is uh, flat. Look at that. I don't know why you'd have a spirit level kind of thing, but okay. Anyway, we've got a little lead here and a little magnifier. That works. That might come in handy. Although, you know, the, uh, the warpage there is a bit much, but good for reading part numbers. We've got some hole gauges and then... Uh, conversions, stuff like that, constants, I don't know if you need constants on there, that's a lot of space for taking up uh, constants, and uh, an and, and anime space, anime space, there you go. And the scale, you've got millimetres down here, fine graduations down there, up to 160, and on the top you've got inches, but it ain't labelled, it's not labelled at all, they're inches. Right? Oh, down the bottom it's labelled though. There you go. Halves, quarters, three quarters, all that sort of jobby. There you go. I'll link it in down below. Etsy. If you, uh, I think, is it in Australia? Anyway, it was like 26 Aussie bucks if you want to get one. Description of contents. Uh, DD12516002. Oh, everyone knows what that is. It comes from Mr. Wang in Shenzhen, but it actually comes from Rob K. So thank you very much, Rob K. Like, you know, you can buy stuff for like one or two dollars delivered on eBay. Oh, we've got laser cut stuff. What's it for? Um, laser cut stuff for. For what? There's no note. Yeah, those numbers aren't helping me at all. Maybe someone knows. So we got these sheets. I, I guess I can fit it together and figure it out, maybe, but there's no instructions whatsoever. Oh, geez, I don't need a puzzle today, really. Brain's not working that well. Well, can please somebody tell me what this is a cutout for? It's not like a Raspberry Pi. I can't think of what the hell this is, it's like, people are probably laughing at me going, oh Dave, come on, it's obvious, it's that, it's for that widget thing, but I, like, I don't know, like, it's got two different uh, top and bottom panels, so they're two different purposes, like, it's got a big screen on it, and what are these cutouts here, like, I, it's, it's, it's not coming to me, I, I don't know, I, uh, yeah. Please leave it in the comments um, if you've got any idea what on earth this is a case for. Because, um, yeah, I'm drawing a blank. Maybe I'm just dumb. Thank you very much, Mark uh, Zamansky from Green Bay in WI, Wisconsin, I think it is. Um, I don't know. Uh, it's a PCB type thingy. Spoiler alert. Oh, we have a kit. That, that looks, uh, that looks Nixie. That is a Nixie kit. They're, they're little Nixie uh, PCBs, little um, and they're the adapters. I've done uh, videos on those. They're little um, they're like adapter boards for Nixies. Cool. So Mark's a control engineer, and he wanted a breadboard breakout for Nixie tube uh, displays, as you do. I'll link it in down below. There you go. You can scan that to your heart's content. And um, it's just, that's exactly what it is. A little breakout board for Nixies uh, with single inline header pins that you can just uh, plug into your breadboard. And Bob's your uncle. Nice for experimenting. Link down below. Actually, there's the address right there. SZY.io. Ha! This one comes from Chris Gamble again. Second suck of the sav. In the one mailbag! Unbelievable! I think this one's been here for a while. Sorry, Chris. I just, what is it? A Christmas card. Talk to you on our top-rated electronics podcast, The Amp Hour. Your long-time internet friend, Chris Gamble. Nine years. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. Brings a tear to the eye. Oh, it's the yes! Yes, yes, yes! Jeez, this is old. This has been sitting there forever. This has been sitting there forever. Yep, yep. I... <laughs> It's the leaded Zeppelin. The leaded Zeppelin. You get it? Get it? And I got all the parts for it too. Yes, I, um, oh, it's a note. Let me guess, you made fun of the stationery, didn't you? Yes, no, I didn't make fun of the stationery. Oh, oh, oh. Now I'm going to make fun of the stationery. 
There you go. Yes, I am going to make fun of Christopher K. J. Gamble. <laughs> Brilliant. Ah, been taking the piss for years. It never gets old. Yes, this was the uh, DEF CON badge for DC-27. How long ago was that? <laughs> In a galaxy far, far away. And, uh, yes, I said he showed me a prototype of this for the badge. And I thought it was brilliant. Like, the, you know, the pun. It's the leaded Zeppelin. It's got leads on and it's a badge. You know, you, right, yeah, yeah, it's got the holes. You know, you hang it, you hang it like this. Is it weighted properly? If you, if you have the two holes like that, because they are offset. There's your two holes like that, and yeah, I because this wouldn't have much weight, so where's the center of mass should be right in the middle. Has he calculated? Has he done the correct engineering? I don't know. You'd have to, like, um, solder it all up, because, you know, there's weight and solder and the little leads and stuff, they all add up, and then you'd have to, you know, precisely calculate the, yep, yeah, and measure the, anyway. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not going to solder on the, like, what is it, 150 little 0603 LEDs on here? Oh, wow. <laughs> That's an effort. But, yeah, I liked the leaded Zeppelin. I thought this was brilliant, and he didn't go ahead with it. And he said he went with something much lamer than this, and I, I couldn't believe it. This was a winning idea, and he didn't go with it. Unbelievable. Anyway. Let me know down below, do you think I'll find info of the one he did have for that show and tell me which one's better, might even if I remember I'll put a poll up the top, which one's better, the leaded Zeppelin or the other thing he came up with? Aha, it was for DC26 but now it's a DC27 badge, yes it's much better than the Good Fear Blimp, I can't believe he re- look, the leaded Zeppelin and he renamed it the Good Fear Blimp. Why? Leonard Zeppelin is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Anyway, um, it is designed to be uh, <laughs> driven here and then, like, I uh, don't know how many LEDs are on there. You know, 100 plus LEDs. Didn't actually send me the LED. It's just the uh, PCB. Anyway, I think the PCB is terrific. But this thing is a shitty add-on I made and now sell as a soldering kit. It's just a Blinky 555. Uh, this is his Get Into Blinky keycad link. I'll link in um, Chris's Get Into Blinky uh, thing. He's got to keep updating it every time uh, KeyCAD changes. That's the problem. Changes so often. He's got to keep, I think he's up to like a fifth or sixth version if he's getting to Blinky or something. So he keeps updating his course. Anyway, online course, Contextual Electronics. I cannot read this one at all. The They're like inkjet. Yeah, it's like an inkjet. Although, no, their font is wrong. On their label printer, they're like daimo -y, um, no, a Zebra label printer. I've got these. And uh, yeah, you can set the dithering. I think what they've got is they've set the dithering option in the Zebra label, label printer driver, and it doesn't give you nice, clear, like, things. So it gives you, you know, really fuzzy looking barcodes like that. And they sometimes they don't scan properly and things like that. And that translates into the tiny little font that the freaking D, um, the DHL uh, software puts in for the from thing. Anyway, um, so I don't know, all I know is that comes from Canada. I can just read the word Canada. Thank you very much. What do we got? Open Dime. Oh, wow. Cool. This is obviously, is this a Bitcoin wallet? It's it, maybe an open source Bitcoin wallet. Open Dime. Cool. By now, if you haven't seen it, go over to EV Blog 2, where I have already released my top cryptocurrency pick for 2020. I've done a video on that. 2020 and beyond, actually. So I've done a video specifically on there. Um, cool. Open Dime. And coin card only verify. What? what? Wow. Does this have a... It has no note whatsoever. Oh, it comes from CoinKite Inc. in T Toronto, Ontario. CoinKite Inc. Okay, it comes directly from the company. Okay, cool. Value. Apparently, this little calculatory thing is valued at 99 US dollars, and these keys are uh, valued at 37 bucks. So, is this an open coin, uh, open hardware wallet? Cold card. Isn't that cool? If that's open hardware, then that's fantastic. It's called the cold card, and of course, uh, once you set it up, it'll give you your um, mnemonics on the back, 
and you have to write those down and don't let anyone see those because if you lose your uh, seed for your uh, hardware wallet, then, well, you can't recover it and anyone who gets access, to, who steals this, can take your coins easily, like within a matter of minutes. So, yeah. Wow, I can't believe that one's been sitting there forever. So there's the coin kite and it's, I, I like the uh, little tactile buttons in there that is quite neat and uh d what genuine caution it's got genuine on it so it must be genuine of course if you're buying a crypto hardware wallet only don't be a fool only buy it from the original source don't buy it on ebay maybe like a a genuine trusted reseller that's listed on uh the company's website but don't ever buy one from eBay or AliExpress or anywhere else because, uh, yeah, you could get a Trojan. Anyway, right in Canada, hi to all my Canadian viewers, Mark A, Rev2, and, and there you go. I like that it's a clear case, so you can see that it hasn't been uh, hardware modified or anything like that. It, that's a, called a uh, supply chain attack, of course. Um, you know, companies will buy these, they'll buy the genuine one, and then they'll hack them um, so that they can uh, steal your coins, or they will hack the card. One, there's a, um, <laughs> that's that's like a human type hack, I can't remember the uh, word, like a social hack or whatever, um, where they uh, prey on your ignorance of how these hardware wallets are supposed to work and they supply you with a card that already that's they've already set it up for you and they've supplied the uh, mnemonics down here and the code phrases so that um, they already have the code phrase and, and, and if anyone has this card that you're supposed to set up if you get a new hardware wallet of course they all work like this is that you can get up to like a 24 is 12 or 24 uh, keywords and it generates these the first time you power it up you're supposed to write these down and then go lock this in your you know safety deposit box and and but if anyone steals this they can immediately take your coins with any uh, other software or hardware wallet within minutes um, so yeah you lose this you've lost your money so what they do is supply it pre-provided, they've already set it up, and you, and like, they'll have like a fancy printed sheet with the words printed, and it'll look all official, and stuff like that. Oh, I've got my secret keywords, but they've got the keywords, and then they'll wait a while, and or they'll get alerted once you've uh, uploaded a significant amount of uh, coin into their uh, system, onto the uh, blockchain of whatever, uh, it happens to be Bitcoin or one of the altcoins or whatever, and then they'll just take your money because they have the key code so don't get supply chain attacked and these ones here are open dime and i'm not sure if i like this concept plug into usb open index.htm follow the steps i'm not sure i like the fact that you've got to plug in a usb and like run something from the usb uh, once again that could easily be a uh, supply chain attacked uh, legal tender on the blockchain in site in countries what anyway um yeah bitcoin it's open dime but this is of course genuine you can trust it. it's genuine uh from the manufacturer so i wonder what the um what the, why they put the castellations on the side edge there oh that'd be uh programming of course uh yeah that'd be uh that that's how they program these things that's kind of neat i like that so yeah, that's jazzy. Um, the key ring hole, they have plated that, so it's not going to uh, wear down. So you can carry it around in your key ring. Okay, I won't uh, try this in this video because it'll just make it uh, too long. Might have to do a separate video on this for those who are interested, maybe on my uh, second channel where I put uh, some crypto-related stuff. Um, anyway, watch my second channel, by the way, if you want my top crypto pick for 2020. I've released a video over there on EV Blog 2. Anyway, this Open Dime, um, the concept's actually quite novel. What it is, is it's just a USB uh, stick, of course, and you uh, it's not set up yet, of course, just like any other, you know, physical hardware wallet shouldn't be set up until you physically get it. If it is, then it's a scam. Then uh, you plug it in. It appears as a USB drive. And then what you do is you drop in some files. They, they recommend like photos. So your own personal photos, photos of whatever. I don't know. You can put anything you want. Uh, drag it in. And then it uses those files as a random seed 
uh, a random like C to generate your private key. And then the private key is stored inside here. And the only way to physically get your private key out from this, oh, and then you can of course use this like as a Bitcoin uh, wallet and you know spend, send and receive uh, money on the thing. Um, but the only way to extract the private key in that case in is then to physically uh, punch out like uh, put a, a pin, strong pin through this hole here, and that what that does is it physically uh, de physically removes this resistor down here, or you could cut off the heat shrink and you could desolder the resistor, and then that um, instructs the micro to actually output your uh, private key for this thing. So so it's an interesting concept. So if you want me to do a separate uh, video on that, because these like videos to like review these hardware crypto wallets, they, you know, take some time. I've got to do it like on a cold machine. I wouldn't do it on my real machine uh, here. I've got to, you know, do it on an independent machine and stuff like that, um, just to make sure I'm not being scammed. And uh, same with this uh, physical hardware wallet here. So yeah, let me know in the comments if you want to uh, see these things powered up, but I will link them in down below. These are, these are, that's a rather interesting concept. Um, it's been around uh, for a while. They did actually have a previous version where you had to push out, it was bigger, and you pushed out a routed out section of the PCB in there, and that would do your private key, but now they've gone with this pinhole resistor um, idea, and they've made it smaller and a bit more uh, robust, and it's got nice rounded corners on it, so, you know, whack it on your keychain and stuff like that. I don't think it's any got any uh, two-factor authentication uh, capabilities. I think it's just a Bitcoin wallet, and it, I, I believe it only supports uh, Bitcoin. That's it. So, yeah, leave your thoughts in the comments down below if you want me to uh, review these properly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I'm already up to eleven packages. This is getting ridiculous. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, uh, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. I've got at least twenty-one. This may this may have to be two. Twenty-two. Another big one here. Like I uh, no 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 no. Thank you very much, uh, Marseille Kowalski. Silent J in there somewhere. Uh, Middletown, Ohio. Um, thank you very much. It's kind of weird. I don't like, I don't, I'm getting a, my spidey sense says if I just rip that open, I'm going to be cutting into something. I don't know, would have been right if I went right along the top. Watch your program a lot, way too much. <laughs> I actually love the don't turn it on, take it apart. Oh, excellent, we've got some processors. The Polish engineer lives in Ohio, excellent. He sent a quad-core R5520. I cracked the package open to take a look, but the die was soldered. Oh, okay, cool. We'll take a look at them. Oh no, did I count those on the shelf? I put some empty ones back on the shelf. What, I'm an idiot. So Macy, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, or most certainly aren't, um, has come a gutter trying to take this uh, Xeon processor apart, it's an E5520, uh, and well, let's have a look. What happened is he tried to get the top heat cap off, and it turns out that the die, of course, is bonded to that. It has to be physically bonded in order to get the heat out, and wah, 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 it, um, it actually split the die in half, getting that apart. So you can see the black uh, gunk around there. So what we've got is like, I don't know how many layers in the actual uh, die itself, you know, 10, 12 layers or something maybe. But uh, yeah, it, it completely split the die in half. So you can sort of see some circuitry on there. I'll put the macro lens on. I won't get out the proper microscope because there's not you know, it's it's pretty how you do, and it's not a proper you know uh, sulfuric acid uh, diffusion. You won't get a beautiful dye shot out of this, but we can see something. So you can see some of that, but it's just like totally cracked. Um, <laughs> not much you can do there, unfortunately. You can actually see at least some of it. You can see, yeah, you can see some structure there. And this one down here, like there you go. But yeah, it's not uh, like a uh, Zepto bars. Uh, you know, chip tear down or anything like that. They're the masters of that. They do fantastic die shots. Absolutely, just just the colour you get in them are absolutely brilliant. Anyway, thanks for that. It's interesting to see uh, how you know that is like really bonded on there. I don't know how you'd actually uh, decap these properly. Would you have to, uh, you know, heat it up to uh, decap that and then um, you know, um, sulfuric or whatever acid attack 
the thing and how would you get down to the different layers and things like that. There's there's various techniques for it, but yeah, it's pretty special stuff. I like how the colors change. This isn't a great example, but look, purple, green, and then orange or whatever. That's pretty neat. Thank you, Walter Jack something. I can't read it because they stuck a label over the top of it. Um, from Allentown, uh, PA, Pennsylvania, that crazy Aussie bloke, mailbag, PO Box 7949, Borkham Hills, New South Wales, 2153, Australia. Not Austria. For those playing along at home, if you want to send me something in 2020, please do. I plan to keep mailbag going. Probably still on my rocking chair. Welcome to everyone's favourite segment, mailbag. <laughs> Will I sound like that? I don't know. <laughs> it's a winner winner chicken dinner scratchy. <laughs> well done. Cheers from Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, Philadelphia. I said Pennsylvania. It's Philly. Philly. I recently started an electronics maker channel on YouTube. Excellent. And like all such channels, your work is a major inspiration. Thanks for all the hard work and it is hard. Enjoy the gift. If you win, send it back and I'll split it with you. A <laughs> Walt. Overkill Projects. I like the name of that. Um, channel name. Overkill Projects. I'll link it in down below. Excellent. Thank you very much. Don't have to scratch it with a knife, of course. Might have a shave while I'm at it. I think it needs a sharpen. Whoa. The knife might be scraping too much off. Don't use knives to do scratchies. They, they really suck. Use an Aussie 20 cent coin instead. Lucky platypus. Let's go. Oh, yeah. That's infinitely better. <laughs> no, knives suck. Don't use them. I think I really screwed the pooch on one of them. Nah, unfortunately, we've come a gutter. Everyone can double check, but you've got to match the number up the top and that dodgy one down in the corner, that's a seven, I believe. So, yeah, don't gamble, kiddies. you waste your money. It's good to dream, though. Thank you very much, Lucas McLaren in uh, Sorrento in Victoria. So it's from Australia. Bloody ripper. Um, Trump, Trumper here? The Thumper here. <laughs> Trumper here, sorry. <laughs> the Thumper here. Had to get a Trump in there. Get in the keywords. Got some boards. Oh, cool. This is awesome. I actually... I had this on the list <laughs> donkeys years ago. It's a um, it's a little Toshiba hard drive. Wow, that's that's worthy of more than a uh, two minute teardown in a mailbag. That's a little like what one inch diameter um, hard drive. Don't know the actual size of that. Cool. Looks like we've got two of them. Awesome. So yeah, they'll have to be like separate separate teardown videos because I really really find those interesting. Don't know where they come from. They're little, little Toshiba hard drives, made in Japan. All the best stuff's made in Japan. There you go, look at that. Groovy, huh? There is one that I've opened, but I wanted to do a video on that, so I'll just, um, crazy, crazy potato-y mailbag. I think, I, I think I've opened it before, actually, and I just put it there so I wouldn't lose it. <laughs> crazy Aussie bloke mailbag, yep, from uh, Germany. Thank you very much. Um, doesn't say who it is. That is a Dodgy Brothers light bulb. No note. Did it come straight from uh, straight from eBay? No, no, that, that Germany on it. Yeah, that that's just just the weight of it. You know that's dodgy as. Wow, two minute teardown. Jeez, that's going to be a shocker. Yeah, my spidey sense tells me this is going to be an absolute turd. Just weighs absolutely nothing. No name. Oh, let's crack it open. Well, there you go. It's just soldered down in there, and this is just uh, chintzy plastic. There's no uh, heat dissipation there. Well, that is as how you're doing as they come. Look at this line in here. This is 240 volt AC. We've just got a capacitive divider here. That's it. Goes into a bridge rectifier, and then there's no constant current drive. There was a chippy in there, um, but I you know, save a few cents for that. Um, bugger that. So it's just a, a bridge rectifier and some dropper resistors and a cap on the output. I mean, come on. Come on. Really? Utter, utter garbage. Oh, wow. From someone, Yuan? Sorry, I don't know. Uh, I think it could just be an eBay thing. Let's have a look. I know what it is. 
Yep. People keep sending them. I don't know. I'll, I'll keep it shrink wrapped. I've done many of these before. I'll keep it shrink wrapped. It's a two dollar multimeter. Um, might be able to blow it up with an electric fence tester that I um have. So I'm gonna keep that shrink wrapped. Special. Lucky last, we have a book. Uh, spoiler alert. We've got Tevec envelopes. Love Tevec envelopes. Bit of a Tevec fanboy. I use them in houses for um, insulation. That's an American thing. Not insulation for, like, um, I, I don't know, some sort of wrapping on houses or something. Arduino Playground. Warren Andrews. Geeky Play. If you're into your Arduinoes. Jeez, that's like 300 pages. 300 pages of arduino -y goodness. Uh, it's no colour. It's all black and white. That's alright. Save the ink. Save the whales. If you're into your Arduino projects, that's probably going to do the business. No starch press. Yeah, I've had that one a while. So this is Geeky Projects for the Experienced Maker. Um, and No Starch Press. I do actually have an open uh, invitation from No Starch Press if I ever want to um, get a book uh, published. Anyway, that was info about the uh, author, setting up useful scores, reaction time machine. So 10 different uh, projects, over 300 pages. So, oh, that looks like pretty comprehensive. How uh, the schematic, determining reversal thresholds, using a H-bridge, the sketch, the shield. That looks like pretty comprehensive if you want to... Uh, Delve into it. Well, yeah, all the photos, drilling the boards, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> wow, the reaction time machine. There you go. I'll just go through one of them. Uh, history. Um, how does the game? The schematic goes. Well, schematic is pretty simple. There's nothing doing there really. But uh, step by step, red board, and then the sketch and stuff like that. Not a lot of. Oh, there's a, yeah, a few comments in the code, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that's and then physical construction. How do you want to construct it? So there's lots of, you know, constructions, things, stuff like that. So basically 10 of those, they probably get uh, a lot more advanced. The mystique of the automatic watch. Ooh, ooh, nice. And, uh, yep, probably gets uh, lots of, you know, physical manual uh, construction techniques and stuff like that. So notes of caution, things like that. That's probably something dangerous there. So that looks pretty comprehensive. A lot of work's gone into that. So there you go. If you're into your, your more advanced uh, Arduino projects, I'll leave a link down below. Check it out. So there you have it. That's mailbag for, well, the 2010s, the teens, whatever this decade's called. What's the next decade going to be called? I don't know. It was the roaring 20s last time. Maybe it's the yawning 20s or something. I don't know. Somebody come up with a good name, please. Anyway, I'll be back with mailbag um, towards the end of... January is when I'll be back, so yeah. So I'll be back in 2020 for my usual eclectic mix of stuff, and I hope you have good holidays. If you get a break, go somewhere, go walk about like I am. Catch you next time. Is that a decade? Bloody hell, I've been doing this shit for a decade. Oh, wow.